Yeah, I, I, I think generally, you know, that there's a term called preference autonomy, um, which comes from Harsanyi, who's an economist, uh, former, uh, he died a few years ago, but an economist at Berkeley. So his view, which is actually in conflict, I think, with a lot of the early utilitarians, is that what people prefer is entirely up to them. Uh, and you shouldn't be saying that they should prefer happiness or that they should prefer wealth or they should prefer long life or short life or, uh, or anything. Right? It's just what, they, what people want. Um, you know, and a, as a, a zeroth order theory, that, that seems right. Um, the drawback, of course, is that, well, what they prefer is, you know, there's not something they're born with. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something that came down from heaven. Uh, it's the result of their upbringing, their peers, their social context, their culture. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of processes that are already shaping human preferences. And AI systems can't help but shape human preferences. Uh, it's inconceivable that we could have, uh, you know, we, we, that we could give everyone an incredibly useful personal servant um, without changing the way they think about things, right? How do we make sure they don't all become spoiled uh, and lazy, for example? Um, and, you know, that's, an, that's another important part of understanding what the right relationship is between humans and machines. Um, a simple-minded view of preferences is that you have preferences for things like, you know, how much income you have, um, how, you know, how tidy your house is, what kinds of food you have in the fridge, uh, and so on. But it's not just that, right? It's also, did you actually make that income, right? Uh, is that dish that's in the fridge something that you personally cooked, um, as opposed to it just being in the fridge? So. Uh, so this notion of autonomy and, and personal uh, struggle and, it's, and sometimes failure, sometimes achievement, that's a really important component. So we have to make sure that the machines understand that uh, and don't simply become the sort of all-encompassing care system that reduces us to an, inf an infantile mind state, which is what you see. So Wall-E, yeah, so, so in Wall-E, all the humans are on this a uh, big spaceship journey because the Earth has, has been messed up. Um, and they're on it for generation after generation, and they gradually become completely enfeebled. They become obese. You know, they can't even get up out of their lounges, um, and they're, uh, uh, they're completely unable to run their own civilization. Um, and that is a, that's a serious consideration, because you know, up to now, um, if you add up all the people who've lived and how much time they've spent learning what the previous generation knew so they could continue, uh, it's about a trillion person years. Um, and that's, so that's what we spent to keep our civilization going. And if we, um, if we wanted to, uh, you know, we put a lot of it on paper, but the paper doesn't run our civilization for us, right? It has to get into the next generation's mind in order for our civilization to function. Um, but that's no longer true, right? If we can put that into the minds of the machines instead of the minds of the next generation, we can run our civilization without all this effort of learning. Um, and that will be pretty much irreversible. And I think that's what Wall-E is, in its subversive, cartoony way, uh, showing. Um, and. Uh, how we have the incentive. So the machines might say, you know, this is not good for you, right? You need <laughs> to know how to run your own civilization. You, you know, kind of the way that parents say, no, you need to tie your own shoelaces. I'm not going to keep tying them for you. Um, uh, but we just have, you know, we are short-term thinkers and we are myopic. And so we, will, we, we may kind of override uh, our own machine's advice and say, no, no, we we want you to do this, we're going well, to design you uh, to take over all these functions because you know, it's, it's not worth our while to, to spend 14 years in school learning to be a surgeon or, or learning to run the electricity grid or whatever because machines are better at it.